first thing to do when we're talking about CPUs is to look at what we are trying to do better than. My current CPU is an Intel i5 7600K. It's got four cores, four threads, base frequency of 3.8 with a max turbo of 4.2, six megs of cache, higher on the power consumption at 91. At the time, it might have been a fine processor to use, but in today's age, it's not cut it anymore. If you watch my previous video where I benchmarked it, you can see what I'm talking about. So, my ideal requirements for the new CPU is it's gonna have at least four cores, but it's gotta have eight threads. Um, I want it to be unlocked so that if I'm trying to eke a little bit more performance out of it, I can do that. I want it to have 10 megs of cache. I want it to be lower on the power consumption so I don't need to worry about upgrading my power supply if I'm able to find a deal on a new graphics card. Um, I don't wanna spend my whole budget on the CPU. Uh, I think even setting it, my budget at 150 is a little high, but going up to 150 gives me a little bit more wiggle room and has a few more options. Some things that I'm not considering are the Intel 13th and 14th gen, um, mostly because they have problems, but also because I think they're gonna maybe be a little too expensive for me right now. Um, I'm also not considering most i7s. I could probably pick them up within my budget on eBay, but I think I'm gonna have to get lucky at an option and I don't wanna blow my whole budget on the processor. Um, I have a graphics card. I don't need integrated graphics on the CPU, so I'm gonna save a few dollars by not getting one with integrated graphics. I've always run Intel uh, processors since as long back as I can remember. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind for me when I'm considering upgrading my processor is Intel, just because it's what I'm comfortable with. So why not look at Intel's entry-level processors? We're talking about the i3s. This one specifically is the 10th gen. It's got four cores, eight threads. It's a 3.6 base frequency. So it's uh, with a 4.3 max turbo and six megs of cache. Very comparable in specs to the i5-7600K, and you can kind of see why I'm considering an i3. Um, it's got eight threads, so it should be a little bit better in performance, but I just don't know if the value is there at $96 right now. Which brings us to the next option, the 12th gen uh, 12100F i3. So this is a... In a or, um, this option does not have integrated graphics, but it's got four cores, eight threads, with a base perform or base uh, speed of 3.3 gigahertz and turbo up to 4.3. So again, very close, but we finally are meeting our cache requirement at 12 megs, um, and the power requirement is a little bit lower. So here's the problem with the that I have with the i3. They're not unlocked. If Intel made a unlocked version of the i3, I think that would be one of my top runners. Being able to get a little bit more performance out of a $76 processor sounds fantastic. The next processor that I consider is going to be the i5. I've been running i5s for a long time now. I started at the 2500K went up to a 6600K, and now I'm currently running the 7600K. So, obviously, a choice would be the 10th Gen i5. We get the 10600KF. It's got six cores, 12 threads, with a base processor speed of 4.10. Uh, goes up to 4.8, uh, it's 12 megs of cache, and it's only $118 on Amazon right now fits the budget nicely, just barely over $100, gives me $75 to find a mo motherboard and maybe some other upgrades. Um, so right up there with that uh, 12th gen i3 in terms of options. Um, the next and final Intel processor that I'm considering is the 12th gen i5 and that's because 
Intel introduced these efficient cores, which gives you a 10 core processor with 16 threads for $145. Now, I don't know enough about the performance and efficient cores, but more cores is better, right? So, we got a 3.7 base frequency and then with a max turbo frequency of 4.9. The bigger problem that I have with this i5 is that the power consumption is higher. And I don't know if that's going to start to overload my power supply or where I start to run into those issues. So while I like this option, I'm hesitant because of that. The next option is the first AMD processor. Um, I've never considered an AMD in my uh, life when I've been looking at upgrading my PC, but I am today because I can get the AMD Ryzen 5 5500 for $83 brand new on Amazon. It's got six cores, 12 threads, um, 16 megs of cache, base clock speed of 3.6, boosts up to 4.2, and it's unlocked. And that power consumption is nice and low. It's what I am looking for extremely nice. Now, if I don't think that the Ford 5500 has enough power, then why not look at the 5600? Essentially the same processor, so six cores, 12 threads, but clock speeds higher at 3.5 and boosts up to 4.4, and that cache is 32 meg. I think that this is an excellent option at $123, and I'm definitely considering it, especially if this is one that I can find used, because that, that, then we're probably looking at under $100. Since we're talking 5600, we may as well talk about the 5600X. Again, same as the 56, right at the same price point, but you get a little bit more speed out of it. So we got 3.7 gigahertz 4.6 boost still that same 32 megs of cash and now we're took we're looking at the next amd is the ryzen 7 5700x this is the first eight core processor that we are looking at here it's eight cores 16 threads base clock speed of 3.4 uh, boosts up to 4.6 got that 32 megs of cash all for 150 pushing the budget a little bit there, kind of like some of the i5s, but when we're talking apples to apples, this one I think has the i5s beat, um, especially at that $150 price point. The last option that I'm considering for the upgrading upgrade of my budget build is the Ryzen 7 3700X. It's another eight core, 16 thread uh, processor it's got 36 megs of cache with 4.4 boost to speed, um, but this one comes in at 135, give or take. So we're talking really good budget option here, um, but will it fit? Will I be able to find a motherboard and keep my price under $200 if I go with this option? I don't know. Well, more research is needed especially on the motherboard side and that video will come i think i know what i am planning on doing with the cpu uh, let me know in the comments which way you guys think i should go or if you have other options i'd love to hear them because this is a big adventure for me and i want it to be fun enjoyable I don't want to have to continue to upgrade all my components so that's something that I am considering with all of these options thanks for watching if you enjoy this content make sure you subscribe to the channel see you in the next one